Hey guys, let's talk about coordinated flight. So coordinated flight is just forward flight, whether straight or turning, with the absence of lateral acceleration. That means you're only going straight, you're not drifting to the left or drifting to the right, and during a turn you're not skidding to the outside of the turn or slipping to the inside of the turn. There's a few different ways we can measure our flight and determine whether it is coordinated, and I'm going to show you those quickly now. So the first one is, here's our heading indicator. The needle in the middle there is our heading, and then the two lines on the outside are our course selection. These stay put, they are controlled by us rotating this knob here, and then our heading stays there. And as long as we aren't turning, if we have zero yaw rate, or zero bank angle, or both really, uh, then this should stay put. This should stay right centered between our course selection lines here. And over time, we should get a sense of whether or not we are turning just by comparing the position of this needle to the lines around it from our course selection. Below that, we have our attitude indicator, which gives us our roll angle. This gives us sort of an artificial look at wings and how they compare to the horizon. We're currently banked a little bit to the right, and we'll talk about why that is in a little, in a little bit. And then here is our slip indicator, and this is just a ball inside a vial of damping fluid that responds to g-forces. Now, if you've neutralized other g-forces, so you're not accelerating in any other directions, to the left or to the right, then this should roll and sit in the middle between the two lines. But because we're banked a little bit, it will roll a little bit to the right and sit along this line here. When this ball is centered, that's called coordinated flight. That's our best indication that we are in coordinated flight. And then finally, we have our turn and slip indicator here. This needle is our turn rate indicator. If I line up straight with it here, you can see there's a very, very, very slight turn to the right right now. This responds to yaw forces. It's a gyro that's spinning behind there that responds to yaw. And this gives us an idea if we are turning or just flying straight and level along with this coordinator. Uh, right here, the same as the slip all above. It gives us, these things can give us a pretty good idea of whether we are in coordinated flight or not. Now the advantages of coordinated flight, especially in a fixed wing aircraft where you would be completely wings level, uh, you get even fuel, or even drain from the wing fuel tanks. You get uh, more passenger comfort because they just feel like they're being pushed directly into their seat, not left or right. And you get a better aerodynamic profile as well because you're pointed directly uh, into the wind or into the direction of travel. Now in a helicopter things are just a little bit different. We've talked about this before, but if I hop out to an external view here. So if you draw a line from the tail to the mast and then extend it on out to the horizon, that's our heading direction. That's the direction that we're pointed. But if you draw another line that follows the direction of our actual flight, these may not always be the same. They will diverge a little bit, especially in a helicopter, or always in a helicopter, because of your tail rotor. Because of translating tendency, which we've talked about before, where that tail rotor, in the hip anyways, is constantly pushing air to the right, causing the body of the helicopter to drift to the left. So during coordinated flight, where your wings are level to the horizon, you will drift to the left in the hip. And so we counter that with a little bit of cyclic roll to the right to counter that drift and slip the other direction. Those two forces counter each other out and we end up flying in a straight line, but we aren't coordinated when we do it. We're leaning a bit to the right. So if we hop over into the pilot navigator seat over here, he's got another gauge that can tell us a bit more. So right down here is our drift angle indicator, and you can see we're drifting about two degrees to the left. So that means that our track angle is two degrees left of our heading angle. And that means we're still slipping to the left, even though we might look like we're in almost coordinated flight. We actually need to be uh, rolled a little bit more. So we can adjust that with our autopilot. Increase our roll to the right. And that should start to reduce our drift angle. So 
So now the heading that we see on our heading indicator, which is up here, I've set the course on this one, should really be the direction uh, that we're tracking in. Our heading should also be our track direction. We shouldn't be drifting anymore. And this works on the Doppler nav system, which we'll talk about in a future video. But for now, know that the pilot navigator does have the ability to see the helicopter's drift angle in the hip. And so you can coordinate with your pilot and find an equilibrium here on your attitude indicator where you're banked somewhat to the right, not quite completely coordinated, but traveling in a straight line. If we jump out to an external view again, it's a little bit hard to see, but the helicopter will fly a little bit right side low because we're banked to the right to account for our translating tendency, or it's called inherent side slip when we're talking about coordinated flight. This shouldn't be enough to be uncomfortable for passengers, but it is present and you will notice it in helicopter flight. Whereas a fixed wing airplane would be flying completely wings level to be coordinated. All right, so when it comes to turning, the concept of staying coordinated is the same for both fixed wing airplanes and rotary wing helicopters. You need enough, you can't just turn with any one of your inputs. So in, a, in an airplane, you don't just turn with aileron roll, you also apply some rudder as well to coordinate the turn. Otherwise you end up slipping to the inside of the turn. So like if I just lean the helicopter, I'm gonna start drifting to the left to the inside of this turn. And yeah, I'm making a very slow turn, but I'm also drifting or slipping to the left pretty heavily and I don't wanna do that. It's not comfortable for the passengers. They're gonna feel that acceleration. It's harder on the airframe. I'm gonna get myself off course, you know, all of those things. The same idea if I just try to do a turn with my anti-torque pedals, you can see that I'm basically flying sideways now. This is like oversteer in a car coming into a corner way too fast and skidding to the outside. It's not accurate, it's not comfortable for the passengers, it's harder on the airframe, all of those things. So we want to avoid that. What we really want to do is coordinate both of those things, our roll angle and our uh, anti-torque in a helicopter to try to maintain a coordinated turn where the occupants of the aircraft only feel acceleration directly into their seat. So they only feel like they're being pushed into their seat. They don't feel like they're being pushed left or right. And interestingly, if your passengers didn't have a window, they might not even realize during a coordinated turn that they're turning because they don't feel that lateral acceleration. So for a coordinated turn, what we'll do is we'll bank to the right with cyclic roll and we'll add some, as we can see our slip ball there is slipping to the right. That's telling us that we're slipping to the inside of the turn. We can add some right anti-torque to kind of kick the tail and the nose around and it'll throw that uh, slip ball to the left from the g-forces acting on it and keep it in the center and as long as it's in the center our turn is coordinated and the occupants shouldn't feel lateral acceleration we can also manage our pitch if necessary to watch our altitude and if we look at our vertical velocity indicator right down here we should see zero climb and zero descent. And that means we're in a level coordinated turn. You can also adjust your collective a little bit if necessary, but you should be able to do it with just your cyclic and your anti-torque in most cases. So then when we level out, we're going to reduce both our right cyclic roll and our right anti-torque pedal input. Watch our pitch. And just try to level both of those out again. And to turn the other way, we can roll to the left, anti-torque to the left. Try to keep that slip ball in the center. If you go too far, you just reduce the amount of anti-torque. As long as that ball is centered, then we are coordinated. Watch our climb and descent rate. And level out. Now, the interesting thing is that turn rate indicator down there, when we are coordinated, when we're not coordinated, it responds, well, it always responds to yaw input. But when we are coordinated, it should correspond 
to our bank angle. It won't match perfectly because it's magnified by our speed, but if we do a coordinated turn to the left here, it should correspond about 15 degrees roll angle should look like 45 on our turn rate indicator, which it does. And we level back out. So that's coordinated flight, both uh, forward flight and in turns. Why it's important, why it matters, what it means for the occupants and for the airframe itself. Uh, hopefully that made sense. If I missed something, got something wrong, please let me know in the comments below. And I'll see you guys for the next video.